Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we'll be discussing the economics within the Steam network, like where the value of Steam tokens comes from, how the price is determined, and how Steemit incorporates the underlying economics from Steam into their social media platform. So let's get to it. In previous videos of this playlist, we've talked a lot about Steam tokens and how they're incorporated into Steemit in the form of rewards for creating and curating content. We've also discussed the fact that Steemit runs on top of the Steam blockchain, from which these Steam tokens are produced. With this concept though, there are still some questions about the details that may be lingering in regards to how this model works. We're going to start addressing some of those questions now in this video. First, what is it about Steemit exactly that makes it so different from other social media platforms? Well, there are a number of things, right? Like the fact that it runs on a blockchain and the fact that you get paid for post. But there's another major, perhaps even more fundamental difference than these. When using other social media sites, most of the time you're using or consuming the service for quote free. At the same time though, the value of you as a user is extracted, analyzed, and then used in part at least to serve you ads. These ads are where most of these other sites make their money. These ads are also how independent content creators on these sites make money as well. With Steemit, however, content creators are paid based on having their work recognized and liked by the Steam community. These creators are not having to run ads on their content in order to be compensated for their work. At the same time, Steemit, the company, is not currently showing ads on the site. From my initial research, the majority of Steemit's revenue appears to come from mining the Steam blockchain. As more users come to Steemit, use the Steam blockchain, and demand Steam, the more value the Steam tokens will gain. Now, whether or not this business model may change in the future is something we'll see in time. All right, let's shift gears a bit now and move to Steam tokens. We've discussed before how a fixed amount of Steam tokens are produced from the Steam blockchain each day, and that 75% of those tokens are distributed to the reward pool. So how is this fixed amount of Steam tokens decided on each day? Like, what determines how much Steam is produced? Well, Steam produces these tokens based on a defined yearly inflation rate. Starting in December of 2016, Steam defined an inflation rate that determined how much Steam would be produced each year. The yearly inflation rate started at 9.5%, and this percentage is reduced by a rate of 0.01% every 250,000 blocks, which equates to a decrease of about half a percent per year. This inflation rate will continue decreasing at this rate until it reaches 0.95%. Alright, so that helps us determine how this fixed amount of steam is determined each day. So with this fixed amount, we know that creators and curators are receiving the tokens as rewards. But on the surface, someone could ask, okay, who cares? Why are these tokens even looked at as rewards? Rewards should have value, right? Well, where is the inherent value of Steam? Let's think about this. Users on Steemit have a reason to value Steam. That reason is because if you're on Steemit and you have Steam, you have the ability to convert this Steam into Steam power, which will directly influence the amount of money you can make on your posts, comments, and upvotes. So there is a demand for Steam from both users creating and consuming content on Steemit. As the Steemit platform continues to grow and attract more users, the value of Steam will increase as well. There's also demand for Steam from outside of Steemit as well. Since these rewards from Steemit take the form of cryptocurrency tokens, they can be traded on financial markets where there is indeed a market for buyers and sellers to well, buy and sell Steam based on anticipation or speculation about where the price will move in the future. So simply put, the value of Steam is determined by whatever value the players in the market assign to it. Now, a very similar but slightly more direct question to the one we just addressed is, what determines the price of Steam? Well, just like anything else that has an associated price, the supply and demand in the market is what determines the price of Steam at any given time. All right, now in terms of the value that's associated with these tokens, once you have them, what can you do with them? We know that Steam is the base currency token for Steemit and that Steam dollars and Steam power are kind of derived from Steam. 
So let's talk about Steam tokens first, and then we'll move on to the other two. As discussed, with Steam tokens, you can power up to Steam power, which will give you more influence in the Steam it community and allow you to earn more for your contributions and interactions. You can also trade Steam for other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. With Steam dollars, you can purchase items through third parties that accept them like PeerHub.com. You can hold it as a stable value currency token, and you can also trade Steam dollars for other cryptocurrencies as well, just like you can with Steam. And as covered in previous videos, you can convert or exchange each of these currencies, Steam and Steam dollars, for one another. Steam power, on the other hand, we know is more limited in terms of what we can actually do with it, because its sole purpose is to be a measure of influence within the Steam network. So, depending on what your individual objectives are, you may have more reason to purchase or accumulate or hold one of these over the other. This brings us into the next topic of incentive. This kind of goes back to what we were just discussing about the value that's placed within each of these instruments. If you're on Steemit, for example, you have incentive to accumulate Steam for the purposes we discussed earlier. Having more Steam is going to generally give you the ability to convert it to Steam power if that's what you desire. These same arguments can be made for Steam Dollar as well. Additionally, the fact that each of these can be transferred or withdrawn from your account to exchange for another cryptocurrency that could in turn be exchanged for a fiat currency is yet another incentive why you may want to keep some of your earnings in one of these forms. With Steam Power though, you're incentivized to accumulate and hold for a couple reasons that differ from the ones discussed for Steam and Steam Dollars. One, which we harped on a bit lately, is the increased influence you have in the community for having more Steam Power. Meaning the more Steam Power you have, the more rewards you'll get paid from the reward pool for the posts that you engage with. Another incentive to hold Steam Power is because, as we've talked about before, 15% of the Steam that's produced each day is distributed to holders of Steam Power as what can be looked at as interest for holding it. All right, so we've gone through several of the key fundamentals that are interwoven into both the Steam Network and Steemit. You should now have a better understanding for where the value, pricing, supply and demand, and incentive structure come into play here. And hopefully this discussion on some of the economics underlying this platform helps to present a fuller picture of it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Steemit goodness.